Hello everyone, this is Jay at Inspiration Masters. As a part of our inspiring series, we get an opportunity to meet the difference makers, the entrepreneurs, the artists, the business owners who are making a difference, not just in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, but around the world. And today is no different. I have a very special guest here with me. I have Mr. Bhaskar Rayavaram here with me. Bhaskar, welcome to Inspiration Masters. Thank you, Jay. I am nice so glad you could find some time and come and sit and talk to us today. So let me tell you something about Bhaskar. And he is, he holds his bachelor's from the NIT Warangal. He holds his executive MBA from UT Dallas and he's in ID for the last 28 years. And one of the great thing he does is with the language services, which we'll be talking a great deal about, especially Telugu. He's a stage artist, also a radio show artist and a triathlete. And the special thing I want to mention about is he has completed his 200 days in a row in the gym. That's a 200. I think he just completed, right? Yes, yes. 200 days, days in a row. That Who's is, counting that, anyway? That is, that is, <laughs> that's an accomplishment. So, yeah, of course, I mean, <laughs> I'll be counting that. <laughs> and uh, so he's doing a lot of, he's multi-talented. He's doing a lot of activities today, our focus, and uh, mainly I'll be talking a whole lot about the Manabadi program. Yes. So I'm so excited about that. I heard about Manabadi program from so many colleagues of yours, and today is my opportunity to get some more information about that. Absolutely. So, uh, tell us something about how did you get the idea? Like all of us speak languages. Mm -hmm. All of us are interested in some of the languages, mother tongue we learn. How did you get the idea, and how did you get it started? So it's not just me who started it. Uh -huh. Uh, we have similar uh, like-minded people mm -hmm. that were, you said it clearly, uh -huh. that we all speak languages. Yes. Then we were thinking, is it just about us? Yeah. Right? Is it, is it enough for us to speak language? How about our kids mm -hmm. and their kids and the other generations to come? Yes. And Manabadi was started uh, by, we don't call it an organization, we are a global Telugu family. Uh -huh. It's called Silicon Andhra. Silicon Andhra. Okay. So Silicon Andhra started in 2000. Mm -hmm. So we, the, with the purpose of passing on the treasure of our tradition, culture and values, our literature, to our future generations. So when we started in 2000, we offered things that were not touched upon by people before, especially when it comes to organizing Telugu activities, uh -huh. uh, bringing people together. Yes. A lot of people are focusing on only certain aspects of I tell you, uh, movie is a popular yes, that's thing right, that yeah. brings people together. Yes, correct. It's a great thing from an entertainment point of view. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it culturally, historically, Telugu language has 2,000 years history. Mm -hmm. And there's so much richness associated with the language, with the places where we come from. And movie is probably, what, 80 years old yeah. in terms of industry or the evolution of it. Yes. So we thought there is a lot more to do than that. Mm -hmm. So Silicon Andhra, when it's, we started doing uh, various activities around our culture, tradition, and literature. We focused on those things that are far away from this uh, very stipulated movie industry. Yeah. And while doing that, so for example, we took up on uh, the Kuchipudi dance program. Mm -hmm. We took up on one of the great saints that started writing uh, songs about Lord Venkateshwara. Uh -huh. It's called Thalapak Annamacharya. Okay. And he uh, had a dream of vision of Lord Balaji uh, at his young age, uh -huh. and he started on around the age of 18, started writing prolifically, a lot of kirtanas we call them, we don't even call them songs. Uh -huh. So they're called kirtanas, kirtanas. and he started yeah. writing them. And then we, we th there's so much richness in those um, yes. kirtanas, and we wanted to make sure every Telugu person knows about it. So we mm -hmm. picked up on Anamachera Kirtanas, Kuchipudi dance program, and many other tradi traditional mm -hmm. cultural things that are associated with Telugu people. And while doing that, what we realized was, one of the fundamental aspects for anybody to connect with this was the language. Language, yes. So uh -huh. we realized it's we are we are all uh, good uh, lovers of the language. We like it. We mm -hmm. want to keep it with us. Then, is it enough for just four of us to teach our kids? Yeah, is this true. a problem not just for us but for every every other Telugu person? Yeah. And then we thought we got to do something about it. Yes. Then uh, in 2007, after six seven years of uh, Silicon Andhra doing various cultural things, we realized we need to start something and we call it Mana Badi. Mm -hmm. The phrase stands for Mana is our, mm -hmm. Badi is school. So Mana Badi means 
our yeah. school. Our school. Mother so we Wadi. want it to be as inclusive as possible. When people mm -hmm. associate with it, they feel it's it's theirs as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not something I'm starting or we are starting. Right. And you just come and take service. Yeah. Your yeah. body is our school. Is our school. That's a very good concept. Yeah. You are as much part of it as we are. Yes. And we need to do this together. Mm -hmm. And we started with that. And we realized that we, we need to, there are many, we didn't invent Telugu language, it's been there. We didn't yes. even invent how to teach or learn Telugu language. There are yeah. many tools. I, I think I like your idea that it is not just about movies, it's not about one thing, two things, yeah. three things. But as a core, if you know the language, mm -hmm. you can enjoy everything. Yeah, that's the foundation. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, if, we, if you build everything on top of that, yeah. I'll also associate how language uh, actually means to leadership as well. Yes, you are that's correct, that. yeah. So I'll, I'll touch upon that. Mm -hmm. So when we realize that we, when we have to teach the language, mm -hmm. we have to teach it in a very structured way. There yes. are tools out there already. There are many materials available yes. uh, for people to tap into. Mm -hmm. But what we realized was a couple of things. One, there has to be a, a process for it, yes. a method to the mechanism. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there has to be some way in a way where the kids that are born and brought up here uh -huh. are able to learn the language. Yes, because that, that will be a little different way they would learn. The way we learned it yes. back home. Yeah. Right? We have very traditional mindsets in terms of how yes. the learning processes take place. Mm -hmm. And we needed to unlearn some of that yes. and learn some of the things that happen uh, in this country right. and how kids learn, how they connect with the language. Right. And then that's how we started formulating a very structured program. I think, yeah, learning. you're right. Because the kids here are most of the time of the day they'll be exposed to English language yep. and a part of it yep. while you grew up and I grew up there'll be something different where we were exposed to so much it's same the, language the other around way us it's the other way around, yeah, yeah now they have a narrow part where they are listening to the language not yeah. as much as we use and fundamentally also we are brought we are brought up in such a way our original thinking is in our mother tongue Mm -hmm. So we think in, in Telugu, That's you right, think in yeah. Hindi, uh -huh. uh, somebody else from Bengal, they think in Bengali. Yeah. And the kids that are here, they are wired in English. Yes. Their internal thinking processes, their chatter happens in English. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now for them to stop that and pick up something that's new yes. and learn the constructs of it, learn the entire structure yeah. it, and be able to convert their internal process, uh, thought processes into something, mm -hmm. uh, different language. Yes. It's a very challenging process. Yes. And we have a great program around that for Man under uh, Silicon Andhra Manabadi. Right. So you have um, books. Mm -hmm. Is that right? There are yeah. books. So there is a structure. Definitely. And there are teachers. Mm -hmm. yeah, so let me talk about the curriculum yes. first. Yes. So when we said we're going to have a structured approach to it, uh -huh. then we said, okay, we, we need, we're focusing on, initially we focused on the three aspects of language, mm -hmm. which is um, uh, reading, writing, and speaking. Yeah. Right. So our books were structured around that. And we said we're not going to cut corners yeah. when we're going to teach a language. It has to be complete yes. from a pure language point of view. And we also laid out a few principles that we're not going to talk about religion, we're not going to talk about politics, mm -hmm. uh, or any other, like movies, or in yes. the books. We're not going to take even a reference of those. Right. Right? Yeah. And there would be some political uh, connotation in terms of history. Yeah, history, uh, yes. Like, yeah. As a part of the lesson. As yeah. language, they need to learn. They need to learn different aspects of yes. uh, India and the place where you're from. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's where those things come in. Mm -hmm. But generally, we stayed, uh, our goal was 100% pure language, nothing yeah. else. And in the class, we teach only that. So yeah. we said about those things, those principles, and we said we're going to have a roadmap yes. of when we're going to teach them something, what are you going to teach them uh, at the beginning stages? Uh, is, there an, uh, is there an evolution that we can, uh, like a roadmap we can draw upon? Mm -hmm. And we had an end vision. Okay, when a student goes through this learning process, by the end of the program, they ought to be able to do these things. Uh, oh, yeah, there, there has to be some, some things they have achieved. Uh, by Otherwise, the, each year they have goals. Yeah, just, just like the goals, right? They have to be measurable. What is yeah. it that you're going to measure? Exactly. That's the important so, part. So, and then we need to make sure that they will get there at the end when they graduate. Mm -hmm. We expect certain things from them. Yes. And if we're able to do that, then uh, our curriculum has to do these things, right? So, we had uh, all these three aspects covered. So, mm -hmm. they need to be able to read, write, and uh, speak fluently at the end of the whole four years. Okay. As we were doing it, we, in the very first set of books we wrote, uh, like Manabadi is a, is a 360 degree process in terms uh -huh. of how we award mm -hmm. is purely based on uh, is a, what we are trying to do is it connecting with the ultimate recipient, yes. recipients who uh -huh. are our students and if they are not receiving it if we are not seeing the results there is no point just hanging on to uh, the, what we have put together Yes. so we have to slightly let go of 
or attachment to what we are building mm -hmm. and constantly learn and evolve. Yeah, that's right. And when I say 360, uh, our main area of focus is the kids and the parents. Uh -huh. And when they are uh, receiving something and they tell us, hey, this has to change a little bit mm -hmm. because we're not seeing the real, real outcome out of it. Yes. And then uh, the teachers that are teaching them also tell us something. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are other team members that are associated with the program. They're all watching the program, yes. how it uh, actually takes place uh, in reality. Like, yeah. yeah, we can write, have a vision, have, write some books and put yeah. it out there. That's right. Yeah. And then in reality, things take shape, right? Yeah. And so we watch those. We take... Uh, constant feedback from parents, we do uh, annual service, we mm -hmm. collect all the data from them. And then we're also uh, thinking about, okay, how do we get this better? Yeah. And we also realized we are in, uh, in a foreign land. Yeah. And when it comes to US, for example, uh -huh. there are, uh, when, you, when kids are going to the school, uh -huh. there are many uh, languages that are offer, uh, offered that for them. That's correct, they're, yes. They're in fact asked to pick a foreign language. A foreign language is yeah. most, yeah. yeah. But our, um, our intention was, mm -hmm. we are an ancient language, but we want to be a world language as well. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the goals we had. Yes. That means we need to be out there in every school uh -huh. as a language to be offered for the that kids. That should be an option to, an to option run Telugu. Exactly. Uh, whenever they as a foreign have language. Yes, as a, foreign, as a language, foreign language, yes. as a world language, they should be able to learn Telugu. Yes. Uh -huh. Not only for Telugu people. I mean, our goal is for Telugu people. Yes. But once the option is out there, anybody can learn. And yes, that's right, yeah. So when we uh, started with the first set of uh, curriculum mm -hmm. books, uh, what happened was we realized some feedback came along from, the, from everybody that's using the program. Mm -hmm. And then we also looked at uh, if for us to be a world language, then are we teaching it the right structure in the right that way? That is right. The structure is language important. Measures up to. Yeah. So University of Berkeley has mm -hmm. uh, some standards published out in what are all the aspects that you should be covering mm -hmm. when you are teaching a foreign language. Yes. So we mapped it to our curriculum and identified the gaps in it. Initially, we had only four levels. We had pravesam, prakasam, pramodam, prapasam. Mm -hmm. Those are all, uh, in a way, Sanskritized words, right. but the, that means every level has an evolution built into it, the word oh, meaning right. as well. Mm -hmm. Prapasam is where you really uh, are glowing with language glowing. Uh -huh. at the end, right? You, right. So that's the idea. So we, we start with Pravesam is the beginning, Pravesam, right? Prakasam yeah. is a little shine, like that. So the uh -huh. words are given in given a meaning yeah. that, evolved, that shows the evolution. Then we realized when we mapped all this, one of the key components that was missing was uh, was a listening comprehension. Okay. Listening comprehension in the sense, uh, mm -hmm. we, we the teacher is teaching them in the language, yeah. they are listening as well. But there is explained learning. Meaning yes, a teacher correct. explains to you what yes. they are telling you. Uh -huh. But unattended learn, uh, listening is, uh, suppose you are watching a movie or yes. uh, listening to a newscast uh -huh. or uh, listening to somebody speak, mm -hmm. like a speech, you need to comprehend that. Somebody That's giving right. instructions in Telugu, you should be able to understand it without asking for an yeah, explanation. I think the language, they have a part of it where at, at the end you <coughs> actually go into the country which speaks that language mm -hmm. and you interact with the locals in the language which you have learned. And then you need to that, that's That's the way you could really catch exactly. up the things. Nobody Not is... Not the structured one which you learned in the classroom, that's but correct. actually how you apply it in the field. That's correct. Yeah. So that listening component was mm -hmm. missing. So but then we adopted a four-step process. Listening, speaking, reading and writing. Mm -hmm. So LSRW is the traditional way to teach language. Right. So we looked at it. Uh -huh. And then we said, uh, when we looked at the foreign language requirements, what we have in the books, and all the feedback all together, we said we need to add one more level. So we uh -huh. did pra pravesam, prasunam, prakasam, pramodam, prabhasam. So it becomes a five-year course. Okay. Then when we started, uh, we said there has to be a certain age when you can do this kind of things. Uh -huh. So we said yeah. for pravesam, it should be six or above. Mm -hmm. Initially, we had five. Right. Then five is too early. <laughs> then it has to be six. Yeah. Then we, we started doing six plus, you joined pravesam. Mm -hmm. There were some parents that were saying, hey, our younger kids, uh, they have, we have time. Yeah. We want them to get started sooner. Right. So what we did was we started at the 4 plus, uh -huh. but at a much lighter and a playful kind of learning. Uh -huh. It's called Balabadi. Okay. So for 4 plus years, we, uh -huh. we added another level called Balabadi 1. Mm -hmm. And then another second, fifth, from age 5 to 6, uh -huh. we added another level, Balabadi 2. So Balabadi 1 and 2, that's <coughs> two. 4 year and 5 year. So and it's, it's six a 7 year program. So oh, okay. you have Balabadi 1, 2. Uh -huh. And then Pravesam, Prasunam, uh, Prakasam, Pramodam, Prabhasam. So it became a seven-year roadmap. Right. When you start at the age of four, mm -hmm. by the time you get to 11, uh -huh. you're fully proficient in the language. 
yeah. in all these four aspects of it. That's right. And then we wrote the books almost for what? We started rewriting in 2003 or 4. Uh -huh. Till 2010 or 11, we kept writing books and books <laughs> and books. <laughs> I've been uh, uh, lucky enough to be part of the curriculum. I, I can relate to that. We started out with a, eight, eight, <coughs> a single page. Mm -hmm. And now each and every single book of inspiration is about 47, 45 pages. Yeah. And we have five books of those, mm -hmm. plus some additional, just as you said. I can imagine. We have a level S and all, yeah. so I can relate with that. The other thing I really liked about the idea that uh, the same thing which we follow in the curriculum, mm -hmm. that religion, media and politics, we keep it out yeah. completely. We, that's why our classrooms remain clean. Mm -hmm. So we focus only on the content. So I, I really like that idea. That so because we the content. We'll, we'll get cluttered on <laughs> that, multiple different right. directions, right? <laughs> there is a focus uh, for somebody to start with a, a, a slokam. We said, <laughs> no, don't do that. Right? Start with, if you want, a patriotic yeah. song. Uh -huh. Or start with uh, one of the literary compositions, yeah. right? Start mm -hmm. with some of those. So we okay. were very strict about how we organize this. And mm -hmm. when we have new volunteers come in, we coach them on that process. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get there. So all of these uh, curricular books that we wrote. Uh -huh. So the way it, it's organized is each uh, year has three books. So we start oh, an okay. academic year in the, in the uh, year, month of September, uh -huh. right after the Labor Day yes. uh, weekend. And then we go till a week before Memorial Day. Okay. So we run it, run it for about 30, 35 weeks. Uh -huh. uh, for a, so about 11 weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, we, it's all weekend classes. Right. So it's about 11 weekends of one, we call it a quarter. So uh -huh. three quarters of learning. So, so three books. Three books. Okay. Yeah, three books. So that means we have seven levels, mm -hmm. three books per each level. So there are 21, 21 books, books just wow. on the teaching alone. Wow. And then we also realized that, hey, we, we send them home during summer, uh -huh. then what? Yeah. So what we added was another, uh, we call it Vesa Vikasam, which is you have fun during summer uh -huh. with the language. Mm -hmm. So we added a, a booklet for them where they have 30 tear of, uh -huh. tear of sheets in the book or something like that, 30 yeah. or 40. So the idea is for them to do something with the language. Wow. So, and then they come back <laughs> at the end of the summer. So everything is not evaporated during yeah. the summer and it's come back, right? Exactly. What's this? <laughs> they come and show it off at the class. So next, next year class, they share it with the teacher. Uh -huh. and they can talk about what they did. So we create some excitement around yeah. what they do during the summer. So if you look at it from first year on till seven, all seven years, except uh -huh. the seventh year, we have six of those books. Oh, okay. So, and then, so total about 30, 33 books like that. So <laughs> That's a lot. That's a, a lot. Yeah, exactly. And we get them printed uh, uh, back in India. It's a huge supply chain operation. Uh -huh. So we get them printed in India, typeset and everything. Uh -huh. And then thousands of books get shipped over to our Bay Area yeah. center. Uh -huh. And then from there, we, we distribute it across the country. Right. And all so of this is uh, done by volunteers. So tell me something about, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's a massive operation. Yeah. So... Give us some idea and our viewers some idea about how big this program is because you are in several countries. Yeah. You are in several states in the United States. That's also, correct. I think you operate in mm -hmm. India. Yeah. And hundred thousands of students, <coughs> yeah. hundreds of volunteers. Yeah. Tell me something about the numbers. So, 2007 when we started, there were 150, uh -huh. 150 students. Mm -hmm. And that was just in Bay Area. And then we around sept April is when we started in Bay Area. In September, we, the second location was Dallas. Mm -hmm. We started here uh, for the same academic year. We start we had about fourteen in Dallas area. Uh -huh. So two thousand seven about close to two hundred students, and then since then, n until now, from the twelve years journey, we had total of close to fifty thousand students go through the system. Oh wow, that's that's so quite, quite this year cool. alone we have close to twelve thousand students in the system. In the system. Yeah. yeah. So twelve thousand students are actively studying this year. Mm -hmm. So over a period of time we had fifty thousand close to fifty thousand kids going through that. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we started in two locations. Uh -huh. Now we're in forty different uh, states in across the country. Forty states in the 40 United states States in the United States and ten different countries across the globe. Wow. So our our emphasis was if you want to learn a language, if mm -hmm. you want to teach your kids a language we want to make it as simple as possible. So yes. it'll be one, two, three things you need to do. We find a teacher, volunteer teacher, find somebody who can help the class, organize it, coordinators, mm -hmm. and then uh, maybe an assistant that can hold the team together, right? Three right. of them minimum to right. start with. And then a, ten, a group of 10 parents that are interested to teach their uh, kids their language. Once we wow. have those things, we can wow. start a location anywhere in the world, just like that. And it's a, it's a non-profit. It's a non-profit, yeah. Yes. So all, wow. the, all of them, like we started maybe in Bay Area, about half a dozen volunteers, and mm -hmm. in Dallas, about two of them. And then uh, now we have 1,200 volunteers across the country, <laughs> across the world. 
So that's and quite a good operation. It is. 50,000 students, 1,200 volunteers. 1,200, that's phenomenal. And everybody does it purely on the sense, in the sense that they want to uh, do something for the language. That's right. I mean, do you, you're developing <coughs> leaders too. Absolutely. Leaders too, there are people who are really willing to give something. Yep. Yeah. So, not only leaders in terms of people yeah. at our age where they're volunteering, uh -huh. we believe in language enabling future leaders as well. Yes. That's one of the drivers for us. Yes. We want to create true global uh, citizens and leaders mm -hmm. and the language is the one that in our, in, in our opinion mm -hmm. is the one that sets the foundation for leadership. The reason yes. why I say that is because a lot of families center their leadership around their values. Yes. And their values translate through language. That is so correct, we, yeah. Uh, if I have my grand, the grandparents sit with the kids mm -hmm. and teach them for example, uh, I'm Rai or I'm somebody else is something else. Yeah. Even though we're all Telugu people, each family have their own set of values and principles. That is right, yeah. And those things get propagated across generations. Yeah, so from grandparents to, to the, the grandchildren, to grandchildren yeah. they would have a common thing which is the language yes. to hold that together. And that, that is, that's why That's how they so translate important. their values. They tell you, hey, do this way mm -hmm. because of these, these, these things, right? Yes. And they're able to tell that in their language in, in a that purest right. way possible. Yes. If you ask the grandparents, even though they, some of them are capable of telling in English, uh -huh. they don't feel the same sense of connection when it comes to offering right. those things. In, in I think you mentioned that Kirtanas. Yeah. You can't convert that into English. There is, it does, it, it I can, sense. I can, I can it give a meaning of it, but I can't. It gives a sense. <laughs> exactly. It doesn't really give us a sense of yeah. what it means. Yes. So the bond between the grandparents and the kids that are learning language yeah. is a huge, is one of the the most benefits we get out of this program yeah because now like um, i take my own son i mean everybody that started with it i had some sense of selfishness yeah i started because i wanted to have my son learn the language uh -huh. because i wanted him to interact with yes. his grandparents yes in telugu right now he picks up the phone he talks to them fluently in telugu mm -hmm. he turns around if you come across somebody yeah. with a non-telugu you yeah. feel like he's an american kid yeah so that happens for every student that's part yes. of the program when they are talking to their own kid um, grandparents and parents they behave like a, you know 100 percent telugu people telugu yeah. kid. yeah and when they're out there in the, in the world and society they're you know they're no less than anyone else yeah. so now we have empowered them with certain yes uh, what do you call executive ability uh -huh. for them to operate in different environments yeah. in the truest possible sense. And it, it gives a privacy at a place, uh, you're at the airport, you're talking in your yeah, that's a, It gives that's, you an amazing level of that's privacy. The, that's, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> that's one un unintended benefit <laughs> that we realize <laughs> that kids are using it. Yeah. In fact, I've, I've seen people, uh, the younger kids that are in high school and other places, uh -huh. uh, if they have two or three friends that are Telugu speaking, yeah. they break into their language. Yeah. Because it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard stories from parents because parents talk in Telugu uh -huh. and kids don't understand it. Uh -huh. they, don't, they don't, they want to learn this language. Yeah. Parents cannot have secrets. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> that is right. Dad, mom, you don't speak that language in front of me. I want to learn. So they yeah, that's, that's right. Because they, they're being alienated. Yeah, okay. What are they talking about? Are they talking Absolutely. about something? <laughs> yeah, about me. So you can't break into their life. So now the, the parents, if they want to talk secret, they have to break into Hindi. Yeah, that is right. They have to go to one more language. One more language. <laughs> Guess what? The kids are after learning that language as well. Saying, no secrets. I want to learn that. So yes, publicly, yeah, when you're out there in the airport, it makes yeah. a lot of sense for you to just have your own space and talk in Telugu. That's right. That's one of the unintended benefits. But it, it again, all of that again goes yeah. back to the bonding side, right? Yes. As a family, you become much more close knit if you are speaking mm -hmm. in language. Yeah, that is true. Our measure is, you know, when when kids are emotional. Yeah what are they really coming out with? Mm -hmm. Are they responding to you in mother tongue? Yeah. If they do that, then we are successful. Yeah. So yes, peripherally, if you are asking them to converse, they uh -huh. do that. But if you are really sad, if you're really angry, uh -huh. the deepest emotional uh, sentiments they express, uh -huh. if they're doing it in Telugu, then we know we reach their heart. Yeah. So that's to me is fundamentally where we want to drive this to. Yes. Where if they are hungry, they come to their mom asking, "Amma annam petu," right? <laughs> that's right. "Amma na kannam kavali." That means naaku akal eston. That means I'm hungry right now. Mm -hmm. Please, you know, give me some food. Yeah. The, uh, if they can do that in pure Telugu, coming to their mom, that's mm -hmm. to us is a victory. So yeah. So yeah. that's what I was going to ask. Like this. Oh, what is that that something which you're looking forward to? Yes. This is something which So you're this is the build up, right? How these kids now they they get the language, they mm -hmm. are global citizens, they learn all the values 
from their grandparents and parents. Now they're also learning a lot of life through these lessons. Uh -huh. So when we teach, uh, so that brings a focus to our, our teachers. Uh -huh. But uh, you know, uh, you asked about you know how they where do they come from? Yeah. How do they teach? So they're also enthusiastic like uh, I am. So they want to teach. They they learn some Telugu. Yeah, you have some program <coughs> to teach the teachers. Yes, absolutely. So what we everybody starts being an enthusiast first, mm -hmm. and we take out the problem of what to teach next by giving a beautiful curriculum. Mm -hmm. we, they don't have to think about anything else. Yeah. What to teach next is already given. That's already there, yeah. We give That's them right. a minute by minute plan, saying, hey, for a two hour class, first 10 minutes you focus here. Mm -hmm. First, next 15 minutes you do this. Next, you do this in the break mm -hmm. for between two hour, in the two hour class. Yeah. So we give them a full laid out program. Uh -huh. And then we also coach them in terms of, see, a lot of people know certain aspects of Telugu, but they're yeah, teaching part is a different story than Not only that, from, a, learn, right? from the completeness of the language, yes. there are uh -huh. some gaps in everybody's mind. So we, we want to make sure their, their gaps are getting filled as well, so they become fully capable of teaching. Right. Yeah, I would know the second language, yeah. but it's not easy for everyone to teach that language <coughs> to the kids. That's correct, yeah. So, so that we, is a process. we call it prosection a program, where mm -hmm. we prosection is teaching the teacher, training the trainer. Mm -hmm. So we... Uh, have experts in the language, all the curriculum team members, uh, they spend a lot of time yes. in coaching, ensuring the teachers are actually connecting with the purpose of the curriculum. See, because everybody has their perspective. Their, it's a commendable their, job, right? You have been a part of the <coughs> curriculum development team. Yes. Uh, so that's that's a lot of work you have put into the program and yeah. a lot of thought process goes in there. Yeah, Srimati Shanti Kuchpatlagaru was a lead uh, mm -hmm. of the curriculum program. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, Vurganti Venugopal, he is another uh, proponent of the language. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to work with these two finest language experts uh -huh. to contribute some to writing these books. Okay. And then um, the program, like I said, like when the teachers come on, uh -huh. they need to understand, okay, what, what's the roadmap is? Yes. Right? If you are asking them to teach just one book, then they don't get the big picture. Yes. So we want to make yeah. sure they understand the big picture. Yes. And they also understand if you are teaching level one, here are the things you need to focus on. Yes. We tell them, for example, for four to six year olds, we tell the teachers, don't even talk to them in, in English. Don't try to translate it for them. Yeah. Go. Don't worry about them understanding or not. Yeah. But be in the space of Telugu with them, yes. no matter what you do. So it's a very difficult thing for us to do because we tend to translate right away. Yes. Yeah. Like banana. Right. Uh, uh, like if you say Ariti Pandu, the tendency is to tell them banana. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Right. Let them connect with. Yes. It is, oh, that's a banana, right? So if you you have to take a lot of pains to hold yourself. Yes. So yeah. we, 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 <laughs> it's we a teach, training, yeah. It's a training. That's <laughs> why we teach the tra teachers yeah. saying, hey, you need to come prepared to talk in Telugu. Absolutely. Yeah. That means you got to remove certain words out of your vocabulary. Yeah. Because we are so used to using them, uh, even though you uh, yeah, feel right. like you're speaking Telugu. Yeah. A lot of English words come in. Yeah. Even but even if you Hindi speaking pure, say. anything yeah. you do. Your language, you have so many up. words that are up. already mixed up, mixed there is no way to take them out. Take yeah. them out, but you got to practice it. You got to make practice sure it, yeah. you come in, uh, and then we tell them, okay, how do you do that as well? So mm -hmm. we teach them about uh, how to go about the two hours. There, there is a training program for them. Mm -hmm. So the entire teacher community is trained by our curriculum experts. Oh, okay. And then we also have a, a co-learning mechanism where okay. the teachers also come back and say, hey, here is a teaching technique yeah. that's working very well for me. Yeah. Right. Here is how I'm teaching the alphabets. Yeah. And they're connecting with me better. Okay. If I do this, right. So we have teachers also collaborate. Yeah. So like I said, it's um, when we talk about just mm -hmm. running the school. Yeah. We want to make sure these people that are teaching in one area, one place, also know about the other people. So we take a lot of pains in bringing them together. No, that is true too. Because <coughs> if somebody has figured out some better way of doing things, mm -hmm. it need to be going to everyone. Yeah, the knowledge has to propagate. Yes, so what true. we do is we bring them together. Uh, during like during summer, uh -huh. so we after the schools are done, we we organize uh, we call them Sadasulu, which is a conferences for uh -huh. all the volunteers. Oh, okay. So in fact, this this weekend I'm going to Bay Area, so mm -hmm. to meet uh, a set of other uh, core leaders uh -huh. of, of Manabadi. Right. So we now that we finish the academic year, yes. What are the things? What did, what are the things that are working well? What are the things that are not working well? Uh -huh. How do we take take it upon? So every year we bring people together. And we do uh, regional conferences, we do uh -huh. uh, sub-regional conferences, so some things like that. So where everybody come together, they always connect with the mission again. They understand what's working for yeah. somebody else, they learn from each other, mm -hmm. and the whole program evolves like that. So right. we've been doing it for every year we do these conferences. It's a lot of work, 
Yeah. But they, it, 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 oh, it is very critical though. It's critical, this, yeah. yeah. It's, so I was talking to Mr. Anjan, he said there was a big big exam going on and also yes. you, had a, you had some kind of convention, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, I'll tell you a couple of things yeah. that happened. So one, one thing when we were formulating all this curriculum, uh-huh. we needed somebody authoritative to be associated with us. Yes. So what we did was we contacted uh, Putti Sridhamulu Telugu University in Hyderabad. So they are... Telugu University is the de facto standard in terms of language. Mm-hmm. So they were uh, evaluating our approach. Yes. They blasted our curriculum, they reviewed it, they gave feedback. While mm-hmm. we were writing the books, we, we took their advice. Mm-hmm. So ultimately it is approved by them. Okay. And while approving it, we also had a goal of them certifying the kids as well. Yes. Yeah, you certified mm-hmm. the curriculum all right. Right. Now, ultimately, the true measure of being it, executed. The true measure of it is: <laughs> are the students measuring up to it or not? Yeah. So we had an agreement with them yeah. where they come here uh-huh. and execute. Uh, I mean, conduct the exams. Yes. So for the level of prakasam, which is after pravesam, prasunam, prakasam, which is the third level, uh-huh. they do a junior certificate. Oh, okay. And then pramodam, prakasam, which is the fifth level, they do a senior certificate. Mm-hmm. These are university certificates. Yes. These are. I mean, these are approved by. Uh, I mean, these are given by them. Uh-huh. They set the paper. Right. Their officials come here. Yes. And they invigilate the exams, and they, they evaluate the process, and they actually everything. If students they do it. Yeah. What we do work with them is to uh-huh. enable. For example, uh, we are right now uh, last year uh-huh. when we started with the university examination process. Very first year, six years ago, we started uh-huh. with them. Uh, we had two hundred thirty students writing it. Last year, we had twenty two thousand three hundred forty. Oh, okay. Ten times since ten times the number of people yeah. that are taking university exams yeah. have gone up like tenfold. Yeah. But we can't really have four or five university officials mm-hmm. fly to every single place. Yeah. So this is where uh, we bring everything that we have in terms of knowledge, uh-huh. all the volunteers, to uh, work for the mission. Uh-huh. So we use technology. Yeah. So we had network operation centers, kind of, okay. where <laughs> one one uh, university official is assigned to a zone, for example, Central Time Zone, mm-hmm. Dallas, Pacific Time Zone, two of them, Bay Area and Los Angeles, Eastern Time Zone uh, in New Jersey. So th- two or three, like five locations, uh-huh. the entire country is split into that. Uh-huh. And then one official goes there, they get a big big room with a, a huge display, uh, and then we have a video conference going on. Right. So each of the smaller centers, mm-hmm. they sit in front of a video camera, connected to the network uh-huh. and then they are supposed they get a sealed envelope of uh-huh. the question papers and they open it in front of the camera as the official is watching them. So the seal is broken and they open the paper. So there's no malpractice anywhere. Yes. And then while the exam is going on, the students are all supposed to be sitting in that visible area. Yeah. So the so in the big screen we can see okay, here is uh, Kansas City, here is uh, San Antonio, here is Houston, here is Chicago, here is uh, yeah. All the centers that are doing visible, exams yeah. remotely are visible on the big screen, uh-huh. and they can ask any questions to the invigilator. Uh-huh. And then, and uh, there are local teams also yes, who are, who are operating and yeah. who are actually taking care of the actual operation of the yes. exam. Yeah. But it's monitored, and the moment the exam is done, they seal their papers. You know, I, I saw that because uh, yeah. this you can't enter the center. You cannot. You cannot. The center Nobody was can closed down it completely. Was closed down. You, yeah, you, I, you, I know you, that. Yeah. You read so, in the same place. I was, I was in the same place. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we, we, we took off. Dave. Yeah. I said, okay, this center, uh, don't it touch blocked it. It's <laughs> blocked completely. It's that, uh, we take that much meticulous care. So yeah. uh, and that's very important. As, Very soon as, important, as yeah. soon as the exam is done, they seal the papers, they mm-hmm. ship them to Bay Area. Yeah. Next day, FedEx goes out. Yeah. And there are about 50 teachers that sit there in uh-huh. Bay Area. Mm-hmm. And the university officials are all undertaking the actual evaluation process. Okay. So the papers are evaluated and the system and the results are fed into the computer system overnight. Mm-hmm. And then as that happens, the vice chancellor from Hyderabad mm-hmm. takes the past uh, students, prints the certificates, brings them in person mm-hmm. and then we do graduation the very next weekend. It's unheard of. If you yeah. think about doing exams on this weekend, uh-huh. by next weekend you have university results published with the diplomas we do convocations. Yeah. So the graduation ceremony that happens, our goal was uh-huh. that in, during the month of May there are a lot of graduations happening. Yes, right? that's right. Uh, regular schools are graduating. Everywhere, yeah. Everywhere. Uh, we wanted, hey, why not Telugu House have a graduation, <laughs> <laughs> graduation stuff going on. So you had so it in the May? It was just a random thought. Uh-huh. And then now we started doing first in Bay Area only. Uh-huh. Now we're doing seven graduations starting the very May 22nd weekend, uh-huh. all the way till, I mean, th- even today, this last weekend, uh-huh. Chicago finished it. 
Right. So basically, we had seven graduation ceremonies happening, uh -huh. covering the major cities. Yeah. That took care of almost 80, 90 percent of all the graduates. Yeah. And the vice chancellor flies to each of these areas. Okay. He's handing diplomas. Oh, that's the, that is interesting. Just <laughs> imagine, just imagine the impact that has. Even though they don't realize it, their kids may not realize it yeah. at this age. Uh -huh. uh, you, you're a, like a, if you're starting at six, by the time you get to nine, you get a junior certificate, right? right? So by the time you get 11, you get seen two university certificate by then. You wear this entire uh, attire, like a oh. graduation gown, hat, uh -huh. everything. Just imagine the impact that it would have on the kids. That, that would be great. The pride that, that it gives them. Yeah. And our goal is to make sure they are associating uh -huh. a pride to the language mm -hmm. and they're able to carry that forward. Yeah. So I think a lot, of, a lot of effort is taken into this kind of things because we believe we are instilling that pride in them by doing all this. And I'll tell you all about... Um, the non-curriculum things, non-classroom things we do as well. Uh -huh. So, we, classroom is one thing, 30, 30, 35 weeks of classes, every quarter uh, there's a book, there's an exam that happens every quarter. Yes. And then there's a university exam that happen. there's graduation ceremonies that happen, we, tra we train the tra teachers uh, constantly, and then we do conferences where we bring people together to uh, learn and improve the knowledge of learning, or knowledge of teaching and language and everything. So all of these are around, around academic as aspects. <clears throat> but we realize kids learn in different ways. Uh -huh. I'm sure you've seen too. Yeah. That you cannot have one way of approach for that. Yeah. So we thought kids actually learn when they're performing. So yeah, support, it's, it's, it's another important part. Yeah, so of it. Yeah. if you're, if you're um, say, you're asked to say, uh, sing a nice song. Yes. Not a movie song, but uh, there uh -huh. are so many other songs. That, yes. Like Anamachara Kirtanas or uh, we have uh, folk songs, we have light music that is a richness of uh, language, right? We have so many aspects. So even there we say no movie songs, but you can learn all these other things, right? Yes. So we tell them, go pick up these songs, learn and come and perform. So yeah. when they do that, and then we have, uh, in Telugu there is a thing called Padyam, mm -hmm. which is a, a literary composition, or mm -hmm. uh, how you write it, uh -huh. and it has some meaning to it. Right. So kids can narrate the Padyams also. So we teach them all this, give them all these aspects, so they can come and perform. It, initially, we used to do big stage programs, mm -hmm. right? Where we had, uh, you know, big screens, theater, uh -huh. come in, do perform on the stage. It became too big for them. So yeah. we started coming down uh, in the sense of, mm -hmm. hey, bring it close, closer to them, uh -huh. where the family sits in front of them, and then uh, the, the well-wishers, the teachers are all sitting in front, yeah. and let's do it like a handful, manageable. Got a chance stage. to see one of those. See one of them, <laughs> they can see the parents <laughs> smiling, those, they ones. can see the kids cheering, yeah. and uh, they, so we, we brought it to a stage where now, they can actually elevate themselves performing. Mm -hmm. So we call that Pillala Pandaga. Pillala okay. Pandaga means it's children's festival. Uh -huh. So we do it all through the, uh, after the very first quarter, uh -huh. all through the second quarter, third quarter, we spread them across, and few classes will come together to perform something. Yeah. So we do plays, we do uh, singing, we do mm -hmm. meaningful dances around those songs. Uh -huh. So something where they can have a creative way to express through the language, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So Pillar of Pandaga is a huge way mechanism for us. I remember when I was a kid um, performing on stage, and mm -hmm. I know now how much that helped me to, uh, yeah. uh, you know, my leadership <coughs> when, it, right. when, I, when I grew up in my life. Absolutely. I'm sure these kids, when they grow up, they will remember. Oh, this, this is a lifetime learning. They will right? remember yeah. this place. It's a lifetime learning. Yeah, so we do, we take a lot of pains in making sure there uh -huh. is a whole set of other volunteers for that. Okay. So initially, when teacher used to do everything, uh -huh. But as we grow, right, teacher yeah. has to focus on classroom. Only the classroom. We bring in other set of volunteers to take care of, hey, uh, here is a play, come practice. Yeah. So it's just not just the presentation on the stage. While going through this whole process, they will be practicing a lot. Yeah. So they learn the language better. So we do that uh, stage plays. Uh, one Pillar Pandaga is one children festival. The another one where kids actually uh, take a competitive aspects. Uh -huh. So if you give games uh, through a language, maybe some other kids will connect with it. Uh -huh. So we took the fame, popular games out there in different languages like Spelling Bee, uh -huh. Jeopardy and stuff like that. We Teluguized them. Okay. So we have a Padarangam, with, uh, we call this Telugu Matlata, uh -huh. where you, it's a game of words, uh -huh. game of uh, language. Uh, so in that we created a few games that were originally not thought of in Telugu. Mm -hmm. So Padarangam, uh, Terakatam. Terakatam is something like a Jeopardy where you have a set yeah. of 25 questions, categories, difficulty levels, you choose a question will pop up, somebody will read it, you answer uh -huh. it, you buzz yes. it, you answer it. So it gives them uh, quick thinking ability. That's right. Yeah. Wit and and, and it's, a, it's a game, so it's a game, yeah. enjoy playing. And then we all. didn't do yeah. that in any ordinary way. We, yeah. we did that at the level where, you know, these kids are watching 
Lord of the Rings. These yeah, kids they, are, they, they, they are, they are a different them. generation kids. <laughs> if you do anything ordinary for them, yeah, they don't take it. Yeah. So everything we do in Manabadi, yeah. we believe in highest quality possible. Yeah. Right from the books to everything else we do, uh-huh. we present to the kids at the highest quality. Yeah. So that they are able to see this is not a simple thing or a cheap thing. So yeah. they will elevate to that level and connect. Yes. So we do that. So we have games that uh-huh. we play. We play local games, regional games, international games. Uh-huh. So we bring all the champions into one center. Uh-huh. We used to even uh, pay them tickets initially to get them going. Uh-huh. So they come to one place and uh-huh. then play this international level championship. It's a full stage with all the podiums. You uh-huh. can think about like a uh, like a full-fledged studio. Yes. That's how we set it up on stage. Yeah. When kids come in there, they feel like they're in a game show. Uh-huh. So uh, that at that level, we conducted the game. So okay. during that whole process, so we have... It's, it's very important. Yeah. It's very important. A lot of kids are latching onto it. So that's our true contribution to the language in a way because these games never existed before. Yeah. We created all that fundamentally. Yeah. And then we also have, like just like I was saying, I'm, I'm a radio guy as well. I feel like when you're talking under pressure, under time pressure, mm-hmm. and when you're preparing for it, a lot of leadership aspects that are being helped. Absolutely, out. yeah. Like you, you are a to, you know toastmaster. And yeah. You understand pu- public speaking how it helps, right? Yeah. So similarly, we thought we need to do a radio program yeah. for kids. Uh-huh. We call it Balanandam. So we created a program. We asked the radio channels to uh-huh. contribute an hour for us. Yeah. And they give it for free, and then we do radio shows with the kids. So for each radio show, they do like six or seven weeks of preparation. Uh-huh. So they go through. Okay, here is what you're going to say. How do you say it? And there is all they say in Telugu. Yeah, everything in Telugu. And okay. there are special coaches for that. Meaning, so when you're reading something, for example, I'll tell you, Na peru raivaram vijaya bhaskar. Ne anu palana chota telugu chadu tunnanu. See, the, how you end the sentence yes. when you're reading is different. Mm-hmm. When you're talking, when you land the end of the sentence is different. Uh-huh. So we ask, we focus on even those things. When you are talking to mm-hmm. somebody publicly or right. on a radio, you end your sentences in a different way. Yeah. When you are reading something, you end them differently. So uh, the, I think the, I like this comprehensive approach. Yeah. Learning in the classroom, <coughs> applying outside, going for the games, going for the radio. Yeah. I and think then stage, uh, stage performances. Stage so performances. We basically tomorrow. make sure they are covered on all aspects of it. Yeah. So and then. Um, take this program very seriously. There are volunteers for Balanandam, volunteers for Pillala Pandaga, volunteers for Matlata, and these things are all running uh, by them through this program. Yeah. So Manabadi, if you think about just the classroom, uh-huh. is only one, one major part, aspect one of, part it, of the uh, thing. learning, yeah. but there's a whole other thing that come together to mm-hmm. make sure they're being polished in multiple different angles. Wow, so that was a lot of uh, great information. I think everybody learned a lot uh, yeah. from what you have. And also, I would like to, because you intrigue people so much. Yeah. Now, I have to join the program. Yes. Because you told me, you said something about the app too. I want to hear about that. And you said, I can get an access to the app Mm -hmm. only. Yeah. So again, thank you for sharing all this great information. And you talked about so many things. I think it has inspired a lot of people. Yeah. I hope so. Tell me uh, something <laughs> about what's your plan for the future with the program. So, and when we st- when we dreamt about this program, two thousand seven, uh-huh. where we are right now, I I for personally feel we have come a long way. Yes. Mm-hmm. But our goal is to make this ancient language into a world language. So mm-hmm. we have uh, many years to go. Okay. So we we feel like we're just getting started. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the future wise, again, go to any place in the world. Yeah. Where there is people, there are people interested to learn the language. Mm-hmm. So what we are we're trying to do is there are smaller places where there are few families, mm-hmm. but we can't really start a center there. Yes, uh-huh. we can't bring a teacher there. Yes. So what we're trying to do is connect those people into uh-huh. an online offering. Yes. And it will be in person where yes. a teacher will be teaching. Uh-huh. So we call it Indian Tamanabadi, uh-huh. where uh, somebody in a remote place, uh-huh. a teacher can be anywhere. Uh-huh. They all come agree upon a common time. We set right. the time for yes. them. Uh-huh. And then they participate in a video conference. Okay. And the teacher is teaching them. So the video conference will have whiteboarding capability, document okay. sharing capability. Just okay. like you show a book and teach in the class, uh-huh. they'll be able to share a piece of document yes. and then explain to them what they're teaching. They can get a whiteboard in the video conference. Uh-huh. So we've been, we've been doing pilot for the last couple of years. Uh-huh. So it's been taken on for all those places that are remote. Okay. So we don't want to leave anybody behind. Yeah. In terms of, if they want to learn the language, we want to have a solution. That should be an option for We that, want to yeah. have a solution for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And then, uh, as we are growing, right, when we have a 
uh, a size of class where we can put our hands around it. It's one way to control the quality of uh, learning as well as teaching. Uh -huh. And when we are so big, right now, 12,000 this year alone, next year we'll be even growing further. Uh -huh. And when we have this kind of growth, we want to make sure our learning capabilities, our learning abilities uh -huh. are still maintained, the quality is still at the highest level yeah. possible. So we're thinking to enable the kids with more uh, opportunities to practice. Yeah. So what we're doing is uh, we're doing an app. Uh -huh. uh, we, we, yeah, you have a very interesting app. There. Yeah. yeah, from a okay. technical point of view, we are a little bit behind because uh -huh. we knew it, we deliberately delayed it to the uh -huh. point that we wanted to get to a maturity level uh -huh. in the real classroom offerings to certain aspects and then focus on giving them here. App, yeah. So uh -huh. when kids go home, yeah. a lot of parents are busy. Yeah. You know, they have either two jobs or one of them is busy. Uh -huh. the only one of them is focusing on language. They get yeah. a tiny bit of time. Yeah. In focus among all the things that our kids yeah. do, right? Yeah. They have they have uh, regular classes. They have dance. They have music. They have uh -huh. all kinds of things. Oh yeah, a lot of activities. We are very proliferate in yeah. offering them multiple things, right? Yeah. So one of them is language. Uh, we're glad that some parents are taking language as uh -huh. one of the things. Uh -huh. That's what we want. But when they do, when they get limited time, or uh, the kids nowadays, a lot of them have some device or other. Device. Uh -huh. So we want to make sure we get to a place where they all have access to as well. Uh -huh. And apart from the book, the book will be the main uh, course. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, that's where they actually do the practice and everything. We want to give them additional tools. So, so we're uh, offering a, a tool for kids to practice mm -hmm. at home or anywhere, in fact. Yeah. So uh, we have an iOS and Android app. Uh -huh. And uh, initially, we just want to attract the kids. So wow. four monkeys that talk about listening, speaking reading and writing okay so the four monkeys symbolizes the four aspects of learning and each of the lesson levels are represented oh. here oh, okay. so if you are a certain level student you then may you go into the level into the and app and then uh, uh, you have all the lessons organized in a shelf like okay this. and then they can get to a particular lesson and they get interactive uh, features in this so for example there's a there's a letter to be, oh, this is a Telugu alphabet, uh -huh. so you can actually write with your hands. Oh, okay. So you, That's interesting. So you can practice on your, on your iPad, oh, okay. so on your phone or any device. So this is, normally you trace it on, on a piece of paper. Piece of paper so yeah. now we, we're giving them ability here, and then we also have uh, picture stories, oh, okay. where the kids will interact with the story. So... You get, you, get, you get colorful pictures like this. Uh, earlier you were saying uh, yeah. that you know kids will learn. They will learn. Yeah, so and these are you know, interactive animations. Wow. They won't move until you interact with them. Oh, okay. So the reason for that is uh, this is not just a story tool. This is a tool where they're learning a story. That's right. So that's why we want them to do this. Oh, okay. Turn so, the pages. Exactly. Flip rather, the pages, touch the characters. It running by itself. Rather, rather than running. having a fully animated story, yes. we want it to be an interactive okay. learning. So anyway, so this tool is coming up. This is initially will have uh, will be only for Marbadi students, uh -huh. but we'll also have content in, in future uh -huh. where uh, anybody that want to get some fun uh -huh. learning from uh, using the language, uh -huh. they can use our app. They can use the app. So uh -huh. for it will also be useful. For example, if you want to, if you want to learn uh -huh. Telugu. You can come and at, uh, register as a student and then um, uh, also go through the classes, but uh -huh. then you'll have self-learning through this too. Because yeah, this is better for me. Because a lot of, we've seen a lot of times, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I have to learn. You have to learn. I don't have a choice. <laughs> yes. So these kind of tools will help people to do self-learning and hopefully uh, it will aid them from, yeah. the, from a classroom learning point of view. We'll have rhymes, we'll have stories, we'll uh -huh. have puzzles, uh -huh. we'll have games all built into this app. So that's okay. that's one of the exciting things happening in uh -huh. future. And then we talked about offering classes through uh, video conferencing, in-person okay. classes in -person through video classes, conferencing. Yeah. So that is, that is in Those future as well, things. Wow. the main thing. And then uh, we haven't started in India, by the way. So there's a possibility uh, okay. we could take this to India to as well. India, yeah. Yeah. So, right. But again, uh, all of this, uh, as, as, as long as there are people interested in offering language to yes. their kids, mm -hmm. there are people that are volunteering, willing yes. to participate, mm -hmm. we can bring it, we can start a center. Oh, that's yeah. great. So how many centers are you operating here in the DFW area? So like I said, across the country we have over 250 plus. Uh -huh. In DFW we have seven. We're a big city, right? We're uh -huh. sprawling Telugu people across the metroplex. All right. So our goal is to make the distance to be non-factor. Non oh, that is true. So yeah. we want them to basically come, uh, uh -huh. go as close as possible. Yeah, that's so true. we have in uh, Keller, we have in uh, Coppell, mm -hmm. we have in Irving, and then we have uh, Frisco, we have three locations. 
of the of, of teal and uh, main uh, uh -huh. that area we have on friday evenings saturday independence and coit uh -huh. sorry eldorado and coit and uh -huh. sunday we have independence and uh, eldorado okay so we have we're offering different timings because people will be having free time friday yeah. some of them will have saturday so we're covering all aspects the distance the time slots and everything uh -huh. and plano we used to have two now we have we have a big center yeah that's right legacy mm -hmm. and uh, Play, legacy, legacy and Coit. Coit. We don't have the same place. You, you uh, have you classes. Have the same classes. Well, yeah. Yeah, the same place. So yeah. Plano is a big center for us. And one of the things that's exciting that's happening around uh, this foreign language thing I told you about, right? Uh -huh. We have started with for Frisco, um, sorry, Fremont School District in California. Mm -hmm. They recognized us first, and then we went to Wake County, in North Carolina. They recognized us first, and then across the country we have 25, 26 school districts recognizing our curriculum to be a foreign language equivalent. Right. And the exciting thing for all the DFW Telugu people is that Frisco ISD, one of the biggest uh, in terms of uh -huh. number of students and Telugu population, uh -huh. they are identifying the Silicon Andhra Manabadi curriculum to be equivalent to a foreign language. So if you just, so show, can, yeah. just show our transcripts, they give you uh, the, the credit. Oh, so okay. you don't have to relearn the language. Relearn the language. You just no. go through Manabadi, submit the transcripts, uh -huh. you, get, you get qualified. And okay. Plano is doing CB, so they can learn the language through Manabadi. Plano has a credit by exam where they can take another exam. Uh -huh. And we're also trying to work with uh, Plano ISD see how we can participate in okay. uh, helping them in the evaluation process. Right. So there's a possibility there. We're, we're, we have Lovejoy ISD uh -huh. uh, that's uh, recognizing us straight. Uh -huh. And we're working with uh, Farmers Branch, Flower Mound, uh, Allen, all the major school districts where our Telugu population are uh -huh. to help us recognize, I mean, to get them recognize our language. Okay. So that's where we're working on DFW. We're also going to add a few more locations, a few uh -huh. more timings. All of this information, if people want to get to uh -huh. uh, say, hey, where is my nearest location? Yes. If you use your phone, go to our website. Uh -huh. and so what's the website they need to go to? Manabadi.siliconanthra.org. Okay, Mani, manabadi .org. Org. Okay. We're a non-profit, so it's okay. So we go there, there's a location. So if you touch it on your phone, uh -huh. it will use your nearest uh, if, if your oh, GPS you the and show you the nearest location. Yeah, okay. And so then you'll see, okay, hey, this is seven miles away from me, this is 10 miles away from me, yeah. or this is open Friday, this is open Saturday. You get all the entire the information. Yeah, all the options available. You touch one click, it'll show you how to register for the course. Okay. And then you pay into the program because uh -huh. all these things will cost uh -huh. us money as a non-profit. Right. So the money the parents have to pay yeah. uh, to join the program. Mm -hmm. So all that information is on our website. And then we have many of these things, the great programs we have, uh -huh. how, what benefits people are getting. We are spreading that across the social media uh -huh. as well. So we have a Facebook page. Yes. So facebook.com slash Silicon Andhra Manabadi. Silicon Andhra Manabadi yeah. on Facebook. Okay. That, that's the uh, brand. Silicon okay. Andhra Manabadi is the brand. Okay. If you go, just search for Silicon Andhra Manabadi on Facebook, you find it. Uh -huh. We have a YouTube channel with the same name. Okay. Uh, Silicon Andhra Manabadi. We have at Manabadi on Twitter. Okay. We have Silicon Andhra Manabadi on Instagram. So we have pretty much covered. I see you're all on the social media. Exactly. As well pretty as, much covered uh, on the website. Okay. Exactly. The website is wonderful. All powerful. You can learn all about our curriculum. Yeah. Understand it. And a lot of testimonials are out there as well. Uh -huh. A lot of parents that are experiencing value uh -huh. out of this program are expressing their views. All of those videos are available. Uh -huh. And then if you, if you want any time, uh, just come to our website. There is a contact us page. You can reach out to us. Uh -huh. Just pick up the phone. So they can. Uh, you yeah. have a phone number also on the on there the website. A toll free also. number eight four four six two six buddy B A D I. So okay. that's a, the number is listed on the website as on well. On the website, okay. So there are multiple ways to reach us. Uh -huh. uh, right now is a good time because we are now concluding the. Are you registering for the next year? We are registering for the when next year. That's beginning September. September, but the admissions okay. are going on now. So go ahead and start filling the classrooms because the moment uh -huh. we run out of space, we never say no to anyone. Uh -huh. But again, you, you, if you want a preferred slot, if you want a preferred location, you want to get there sooner. Yeah. And it also helps us planning. I told yeah. you the books is a big operation, right? Books yeah. get printed in India. They get distributed all across the world. Yeah. We have to put in a lot of uh, time to okay. make so that considering happen. Considering the volunteers, if you, if it makes it. Do it sooner, it helps us. Uh, yeah. Suppose 10,000 students are registered by end of June. Uh -huh. Just say it makes it easy for it you makes to plan. It so much easy for me to plan for us, yeah, for us, for us as a team yeah. to plan. And since it's all a volunteer work, uh, you want people to be um, yeah, easy able to do that part. Yeah. yeah, do their part to register yeah, sooner. So rather you're... than uh, disturbing the schedules, they can they can still keep on working with the program. So exactly. it makes so life easy for everybody. Uh, historically, yeah. the people register only in the last week. Oh, that's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. but we ask them to do it as soon as possible. Yeah. If we have decided to join your kids in Manabadi. Uh, to learn Telugu languages, do it as
as soon as possible. Manavari.siliconandhra.org is a website. Again, yeah, for any questions, you can reach us uh, there. Okay, excellent. So that is great information. <coughs> Again, um, so many things which we have covered, and I think I wanna, you, I you have, have one more me. point to do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. One more point I want to uh, ask everybody that's going you know, to watch this video. This is, uh, like I said, started with two or three volunteers. Now we have 1,200 of them. Yeah. Where did they come from? They come from the fellow Telugu community. So the parents join as volunteer. Mm -hmm. And then there are inspired people that come. Yes. In. So throughout this interview, throughout this video, whoever is watching it, if you're inspired by what we do, come join us. Because as we keep growing, mm -hmm. we need as many people to come join hands with us. Yes. So you can always volunteer um, and be part of this program. Excellent. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's a good invitation yeah. to all the people who are interested. They can join the program. Sure. And uh, again, that will be the same simple way. They can reach out on the website and exact contact same. any of the exact people same. and they can uh, tell how they can volunteer for Absolutely. the program. Yeah. Excellent. That's great information. Again, uh, thank you for sharing that. It's not only just inspiring for uh, everyone to learn the language, but anyone watching, yeah. they can find out a way how to learn the language with you offered so many ways how you can teach it. Yeah. So thank you so much. On behalf of the entire team of Inspiration Masters, we thank you so much for coming here, joining us, and today telling all this great information. Again, thanks for watching. I think you learned a lot about uh, the Manabadi program. And do not forget to subscribe the YouTube channel at Inspiration Masters to make sure you don't miss a single of these interviews which are happening constantly on a weekly basis. Again, thanks for watching. This is Jay at Inspiration Masters, Communication and Leadership Training Institute, and I will see you back in a week. Thank you. Thank you.